learn how to develop and finesse your time-lapse sequence using Adobe After Effects. Adorama TV presents DSLR Video Skills, where you'll learn all about photography and videography. Here's your host, Rich Harrington. This episode is brought to you by Adorama. If you're looking for photography, video, imaging, or tech needs, be sure to check out Adorama.com. Join me as we take a look at using Adobe After Effects to develop and touch up some of our raw files to get a time-lapse video. All right, that looks great. I'll click OK to bring that in. And it loads. There is my image sequence, just like a movie. Now let's just drop that into a new composition here. And it's much larger than I need. So I'm going to change the composition settings to match my delivery format. In this case, I'm doing HDTV. And I'll set it to the 23976 size that I need for digital delivery. There's my correct frame rate. All right. Now, as I work here, this is going to be very intense on the computer. Remember, this is 100% raw workflow. So I'm going to drop my playback quality down to quarter or even lower temporarily so I could frame the image. This will speed up After Effects, and I'll only take the hit when it comes time to render the shot. Now, some folks think this workflow takes longer, but remember, if you were going to process all those raw images with Lightroom or Bridge, you would have to still export all of those still images out. So it's about the same time for the overall render, and this preserves the flexibility of having raw right in the After Effects composition. We'll just drop that down here, take it down to quarter quality to start. S for scale, shift A to add the anchor point property, and I can adjust. And what I'm going to do is set it so it does a little pull out. Let's take a look at the image sequence up here first. And I notice that it's currently being interpreted at 30 frames a second. So I want to change that. I'll go into Interpret Footage, Main, and assign the correct frame rate for 24p video, which is 23.976, and click OK. That's going to reassign the clip, and in this case it actually made it a little bit longer, so I can adjust the length of the composition if needed to accommodate the extra frames. I didn't actually stretch the shot here, but I did change how it played back and that's going to impact my settings. There we go. I'll just trim that out. Check my endpoint. Looks like it's 2810. So I'll just enter that as the new duration. And I'm good to go. Okay, let's adjust the size. I'm going to jump to about 22 seconds, which is near the end of the composition, and turn on my stopwatches for scale and anchor point. What I can do now is adjust the overall frame size. Let's try about 30% here. You see that works pretty well. A little bit too small, so I could start to drag that up. And it loads in. That looks good. I'm going to adjust the anchor point here. And decide if I want to see more of the floor or more of the sky. Remember, the aspect ratios are a little bit different between video and still photography. So you'll often end up cropping during post. And I can come up here to the top, and we'll just go to the first frame, and we're going to adjust the scale and anchor point. So what I want to do is have a slow pull out. So I'm going to start in a little bit tighter. We'll go to about 80% there. And we'll adjust the anchor point so the boat is in the frame. And what's going to happen is that that's going to pull out. Now, I could drop this here to really low quality. I'll tell it to render only every 20 pixels. And if we RAM preview that, it'll start to load it into RAM, and you could see the camera move. Now, you don't have to do these sort of zooms. If you just want to size it and crop it, just set it in there. But I often like to put a little bit of a move in post-production, and After Effects makes that very easy using keyframes. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's just drag through a little bit, take a look at some of the composition. It starts in tight begins to pull back a little bit. In fact, I think I'll have it get a little bit wider here earlier. So let's set that to 50%. Adjust the anchor point. Looks pretty good.
and I'll just put a little ease here. By right clicking on these, I can tell them to ease out. And then we'll do ease in at the end so it comes to a gradual stop. Now, let's just select those and we'll turn keyframe interpolation and set that to Bezier so it's nice and gentle. If you click on the velocity graph here, you can actually see what it's doing. And this makes it a little bit easier to control. And I can adjust those handles there. And that works out nicely. There we go. And you can use that to control the overall movement. Thanks for joining me this week. Be sure to check out the third part in our series where we're going to put all the creative touches together to really stylize this and then render and export the final time-lapse video so it's ready to post. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 8 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.